So here I'm going to talk about factor movements in uh, some of these international trade models. I'm kind of, basically I'm going to stick to the specific factors model, which in my opinion and what I use in class uh, kind of fits more into the winners and losers of trade. I'm going to talk about increase in capital all right, in this uh, model, uh, the, the offshoot of the Ricardian model, and then I'm going to talk about an increase in labor. You can go the opposite direction, in, in which I won't do here, but I sometimes ask that. Uh, what, what, what about a decrease in capital or a decrease in labor? All right. And then finally, I'm going to use simple supply and demand um, to show an immigration restriction, coming, kind of coming back to the principles uh, that I use, uh, showing the deadweight loss anytime you reduce the quantity of something that the market would like more of. Okay, so again, this is, this is a basic principles model, but it's generally used in international trade. Um, and and it, if you keep the basic idea in mind about the equilibrium point being where these two payments to the two factors are equal, and anytime you're off, uh, you're going to wind up with well, one party, you know, gaining at the expense of another. So you're going to move factors until you reach equilibrium, right? So I've already drawn this box. Remember, manufacturing starts over here and labor starts over here. And any worker in manufacturing takes one away from labor, which is why you can sort of share a labor pool between the two. Now, originally I had, um, before any changes, this is the equilibrium point where the payments to manufacturing workers and labor or agricultural workers are equal. Right, uh, but if you add uh, capital, you're going to find that there's more machines and there's more need for labor. Okay, so that is going to raise the marginal productivity of labor. If you add a computer lab, then you can have students get more work done. If you add a, a, a wing on a factory, you might have workers needed to work those machines, and those workers will be very productive. So this does not change the price. I showed with trade, I showed increase in price. This is a constant price, but an increase in the marginal productivity of labor and manufacturing. Remember, agriculture doesn't use manufacturers in this model. Agriculture uses land and labor. Manufacturer uses Manufacturing uses capital and labor. So you're adding machines, which means workers, MPL, are going to be more productive in that. So that's going to raise this curve. It's going to shift it to the right because marginal productivity of labor is higher. Okay, now the old quantity of labor is going to be overpaid, and so this is the high-paying manufacturing sector, which all these new machines, it's going to move workers into this sector. And the new equilibrium point is here, which is higher wages, and it's going to be nominal and real because, remember, prices are constant. So nominal wages go up and real wages go up, too, if prices don't change. So this puts workers into manufacturing and out of agriculture. And so uh, anytime you increase capital, you're going to have an increase in the capital using sector at the expense of the sector that does not use capital okay so that's and you can change this I, I do this sometimes you know in class or on tests I can say well, what what if you have a land increase or what if you have a different sector using uh, you know manufacturing and land or something but this is assuming that the the assumptions of one industry uses capital and labor and one uses land and labor the increase in the factor that is specific to one is going to move resources into that sector and out of the other all right now what about labor which is used by both now remember this shares the same pool of labor if you have more workers you're going to increase the pool you're going to stretch out the curve the box you're going to stretch out the box and that's essentially going to pull this over here and and what happens is that there could be more workers in in both it depends on uh the mix and the slopes of the curves but the big outcome here is that wages do go down Okay, and so that's something people say is like, you know, don't have more labor, keep labor restricted so that those workers will get paid less. This model might show that. Okay, now, um, what about using uh, supply and demand? You could do an increase in labor the same way, and I don't draw it here, but you could have a shift out. All right, and get the same thing, that the price of labor goes down if you have an increase in supply. So this doesn't really tell you anything other than basic supply and demand does. All right, and that's, again, something that comes up politically a lot. More workers mean lower wages, and you might hear people on all sides of the political spectrum talking about, uh, you know, restrictions. Okay, but let's say we have an immigration restriction. I'm just going to do it like a basic quantity like a quota you have a, an immigration restriction a quota on immigrants coming into a country okay you have the marketing income which is based on all the supply and demand all right and and in class i talk about what could be the supply factors you might have political um, unrest in a country you could have a famine uh, you could have all sorts of things that cause more people wanting to cross the border out at the same time you could have demand factors which could be things like higher wages uh, family connections uh 
good climate politically, a good weather. It could be anything that makes more people want to come into the country. Okay, and so then those supply and demand reach an equilibrium where a certain number want to immigrate. Now, let's say the political forces take over and put some sort of a restriction in, you're going to have the basic quota that you could see for any other product, all right? So we're just applying it to labor here. Um, or it could be the quantity of migrants. And so now you have fewer, or about half as many. And what happens here? Well, first of all, you're going to restrict the quantity. Um, those people who want to come in are going to be the ones who want it most. Um, and they're going to actually pay a higher price to do so. Okay, now you could, you, so you have the most willing to come, right? You're going to, the, the people who are more on the fence or might have more reasons to stay just won't come anymore. And so now you're going to have a lower quantity. It's going to be the most, the highest demand people, right? The welfare changes because you're going to have less consumer surplus here. You're going to have deadweight loss over here. Remember, so all the people who could have immigrated but don't have given up well-being, and here, this is the interesting part from an economic standpoint, is that this box is some sort of a transfer. This could be a transfer um, to the people who do immigrate. They get more, they get higher wages, essentially, if they do come in. Um, they get a welfare there. But this box could be someone maybe... Um, who is who is paid uh, to facilitate immigration? It could be legal. It could be a lawyer helping in those cases. It could be unofficial, where someone is helping somebody cross the border. Um, all those things could be this payment to that person. Um, it does. It might not go into the hand of the uh, of the migrant. It goes into the hands of this facilitator. Okay, and so what that means is, um, you know. It, it, it actually, a lot of times people might pay. They say, if I can migrate, I'll get a great job. Well, you have to pay a fee to get over there. Again, it could be a lawyer, it could be a smuggler, it could be a legal, it could not be legal. Um, but, but we can apply deadweight loss. We can apply lower consumer surplus. We can apply all the concepts of transfers to the basic supply and demand. So long story short, you can add capital to the specific factors model. And you can see what happens to wages for workers. You can see what happens within the country. You can add labor and you get the same result of supply and demand. But then if you use basic supply and demand, you can talk about immigration issues in terms of quantity restrictions and welfare changes and transfers of welfare.